I am Austin. We are here to play games. Badly. Very badly. That's right. Welcome back to Lies of P. Uh, we're here to lie some more and smack things with weapons. <laughs> yeah. And figure out why we have a face. All right. Well, why do we have a face, Dan? Yeah, I mean, we could actually be a face. Anyway, um, since our last episode, I've gone through and upgraded this scythe weapon because it's really, really good. Mm. Um... And we do have our sword here, and we've got a couple of other. We've got. I, I really like the great sword of fate blade with the booster glaive, and then we've got just the dancers. Um, that's our current equipment setup, and uh, not a lot else to really update. I did do a little bit of grinding, but not a huge amount, um, or a little higher level. But I've dumped most of it into capacity, and I'm doing quality. Uh, mm. So motivity technique equalize here because uh, it just kind of seems to be giving me the best gains. <laughs> gotta get them sweet gains, bro. That's right. Yeah, you gotta grind it out every day to get them sweet gains. The sweet gains. <laughs> uh, and I, oh man! I think there's nothing else. We can just head to the Lorenzini Arcade and move on with our lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> Good grief, indeed. Alright, let's see. I think we had opened up a shortcut here before. Hold on, I'm gonna have to orient myself a little bit. Um, but yeah, I really... This weapon is pretty great. Uh, because... Spin to win. I'm still getting used to the range on it, but. I quite like it. It's I bet you do, you Montebank. That's right. You rogue. Yeah. Oh, I see an item. Oh, yeah, okay. I remember this. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> oh, man, those things. Yeah, let's just... Look at that catch. Oh, that was satisfying. <laughs> I'm gonna charge at you like, nope. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Not in my house. No, no, no. Angry. You know what? I wonder if I can... Nah, he's too far away. Right. Too far. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. All that decay, man. <laughs> so, I'm thinking there are a couple of outstanding questions here with regards to what the hell is going on in this game. Um, oh yes. What it? Uh, what is P? And I, you know, we know he's a puppet, right? But right. There's a thing growing that like crazy nose or whatever. Uh, right, the portrait. Yeah. Yeah, the portrait. But you know, the Pinocchio nose or whatever. Uh, and then there's what's happening with the Ergo. And right. We have defeated the Puppet King and it didn't seem to fix everything. It did seem to depress all the puppets. <laughs> They're so depressed. They're so sad. And hang on, did we come from here or am I? Oh, never mind. Oh, that's a yellow one. Yeah, I wonder what that one is. Oh. Half Moonstone. Nice. Oh, that's good. I think that actually will upgrade this weapon that I'm using right now, or the sword. Oh, um... Wait. 
No, actually, I'm wrong. Uh, standard, yeah, standard weapons. Yeah, yeah, that's a half. Okay, so it's a half moonstone of the covenant or the full one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm, that's not good. Man, those things hit hard. Wow. Oh boy. Good grief. Use that range, man. Whoa. Huh. Oh, that's interesting. So you can block and strike at the same time. Yep, that's because I, I have don't... some levels on Aegis. Oh, okay. So I didn't realize you could do that with Aegis. Yeah. So it's um, guard attack. Okay. Yeah. And then parry. So when you're holding it up, you can press the fable button to parry. I just was mm. doing the guard striking. And then I don't have the final ability on Aegis just yet. But it's gotcha. Kind of useful. Seems like it. Star fragment. Star fragments across the universe. Alright. Wasn't the smartest move there, but, uh... Okay. I think this is mostly dead-ended, but I did get that other item. I didn't see any other way to go there. Hmm. 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 Ah, no. Don't go there. That's where I was. Alright, so... Alright, so this is the end here, so I'm pretty sure we have to go the other way. Because that door is closed. Mm -hmm. Why don't you remember all the navigation? You're my navigator. No, it's all good. Uh, well, except for it never gave me navigation. It always gave me, hey, this is what these areas, oh, and that's it. this is the right way to go. Because we started, Ooh, that looks fancy. We started to go this way and then had to stop. Uh, no, it's... Don't mind me. I'm just trying to remember how to do things. It must be that. Yeah. There. That's what I was trying to do. All right. Huh? Who's mad? My mom. But why though? I don't. I don't know. Both? It just seemed like a thing to say at the time. Okay, but why though? Let's see. <laughs> okay. Okay, but why? That was cheap shot, buddy. Yeah, they look grotesque. They do. Stop moving forward with every move. Get out of here. Nope. Yeah, I refuse. Button. You're in control of... Alright, Austin is the <laughs> uh, dungeon master here, and he is fighting against me. Oh, a forever DM. That's definitely me. <laughs> oh, I've been this way. Okay. Alright. Don't mind me getting lost, guys. So I think we came out this way. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think there was a door past those big dudes. Did we go this way? Oh yeah, because we talked to this guy. Tell me what you need. He's got a few things. Yeah. Nothing that I really need right now. Oh right. Okay, I'm remembering this a little bit better now. Yeah, don't mind me as a yeah, we, we negotiate our way through where we even were. <laughs> Listen, we both slept since the last time we played this, so you know. Yeah, pretty much. That's yeah. Alright. Key. What kind of key? Arcade underground passage key. Excellent. Alright, that helps me know where we are. You, that's, you just used it, right? Yes, I did. I'm pretty sure we came up this way at some point. This is like the weird not quite blood down here, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. Alright, alright. Yeah, the wine. The wine blood. 
Yes. The blood wine. Ah! Honor oh, intensifies. Kapla? <laughs> kapla? I... Or my... Uh, yeah. Kapla! Oh, hey. Oh, they look delightful. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to the basement, continue through the previous lock gate. Look for a passageway shrouded in acidic gas. Sounds fun. Doesn't that sound delightful? Yeah. I uh, think we found it. Oh, oh. Whoa. Alright. Does that drain health? Is that what that does? Well, you're not in it just yet, but I would bet it will. So there's stuff that way. Can't go that way. So we're supposed to. There's a chest down the uh, acidic. Okay. Gas passage. Okay. okay, so we should go this way first. Alright. Hey. Yeah, it's decay. Ah, right. oh, they're so gross. Yeah, they are. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Bless you. Oh, oh. Ooh. Nice. Get back here. Oh, oh. Okay. Oh, those enemies. Ugh. Ugh. For the, ugh. <laughs> this is why we upgraded this weapon. That. Oh, so good. Yeah, we're getting mm -hmm. gradually drained. Decay must just be poison or whatever. Makes sense. Yeah. Could be worse. At least it's not toxic. It is pretty quick, though. Oh, oh, it's degrading my weapon, too. Right. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. It's a good thing you've got a, uh, you know, infinite repairer on your arm. Yeah, you can just repair it. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that his, his hair changed. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, I'm not oh. very happy with that. Get back here! Wow, killing those enemies apparently gets rid of the, uh, the gas, too. Okay. Chemical oh, booster. nice. Oh, ooh. What? Great. Stop! Oh, Stop it! Oh, no. Stop! Oh, oh no. Yeah, oh, yeah. I knew yeah. it. The throw lasted 45 hours, so. Between the poison, I they interrupted your door open, which is something I'm not accustomed to seeing. Yeah, in games like I was this. assuming there would be some iframes there and not getting hit four times and then being thrown for like seven seconds as poison was ticking down. That was gratuitous. Yeah, <laughs> denied. What was your character? Destruction, okay. Nonsense. Okay, let's go th back around. <laughs> <laughs> Obnoxious. Obnoxiousness. Alright. Uh, Come on. These me. guys are awful. Yeah. Come on. So we were talking about, like, what's going on around here. But something else to consider is, like, the petrification disease specifically. And how it affects humans. Mm hmm. But I also am really curious, like, how their humans are being transformed into these grotesque monstrosities, too. Yeah. They're... Like, is that tied into the petrification disease? Is that something else happening? It seems like it should be, but that could just be because they're both part of whatever calamity is going on. Right. I, my theory is, because we've seen some tidbits about the this alchemist who has a cure, mm -hmm. allegedly, for uh, the petrification disease, right? Yeah. And in those tidbits, the implication was also that um, that the cure was, was false. It was not a real cure. Okay, yeah. Um, and, and maybe somebody else made a false cure based off the alchemist's like promises to make money or whatever. Um, 
But I think, or at least I wouldn't be surprised if, huh, if perhaps what's causing these transformations is the cure when it combines with what causes the petrification disease. Okay, so they're related causally by the cure. Right, like this is this is my like proposal and until we get more information is that maybe the cure this false cure is transforming them into these monstrosities yeah Te technically is a cure right doesn't they no longer are petrified but they also have no state of mind yeah that's true uh yeah this is i think, this I think is you wrong. went the wrong way indeed indeed it's hard to know There's so many doors that come back to this central area. It's very interesting. I will confess to being pretty disoriented right now, so... Oh, you've already gone that way. Well, so I'm, go back. I, okay. What's down this other hallway to the left This one? Here? We've been this way, yeah. but let's check it. Okay. Let's see. There might be... Because, you know, I'm open to the idea that I'm not remembering this right, but... Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure this is a dead end. Gotcha. We can find the merchant is where I'm trying to get my head around. It is a little disorienting. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure down... Hold on. <laughs> what would be great is if we could open that other shortcut door. Right. But... Well, I think we were well on our way to doing so. Yeah. yeah. Remember this? Okay. Yeah, so down there is... Ah! Get away. Now down there is a dead end. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, so we don't want to go this way. All right. And I think maybe I missed something going up this other way, because I was pretty sure when I respawned here, you need to go this way. All right. So there's this door. Oh, this, yeah, that's it. This, okay, all right. Because it goes yep, that's it. all the way the hell around, and that's why it was confusing me, so. Mm -hmm. so we had a conversation oh. with everybody. Don't mind me. I'm just going to step on behind you. Yeah, we go down here. Yeah. And there's the door I opened down here, I think. Yes. Yep. It's this way. Yep. Oh, wait. Is this the other side of that? Nope. Or it, yeah, the other this is side the door of, you opened. The other side of what? I'm sorry. The So this is the other side of that passage. You opened that door. This is the door you opened and then got killed immediately. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Well, we definitely need to get the safe or whatever that was in that one room where that dude is. Yeah. I'm going to take it a little more methodically. I was trying to chase down the... I don't really like the positioning of some of those things, but it is what it is. Yeah. I don't know if they disappear quite as fast as we're accustomed to either. Yeah, the crystal lizard like we're get it right now right or you're screwed it was way worse in demon souls because it would like they could disappear i think in the original they could disappear from i don't like that move uh that range is ridiculous yeah come on oh man i need to do a circle around this guy oh nope 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 Ooh. 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 Oh my gosh. So much. Good grief. These enemies are rough, man. Yeah. I'm... Get oh, out nice. of here. Nice, nice. He's that special ability on that guy. That does a lot of damage. That guy should fear the Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right. I got the jokes. All right, cool. Or we that. get, yeah, facing more stuff down. Let's get this. It's a weapon. Yeah, Spear of yeah. Honor. Yep. What is, what is the Spear of Honor? Let's see. Healer attack. Deals heavy damage to it. Okay. It's like a Leo ring type thing. Mm, rush swing, swing. Swing your weapon wide. That's a... Uh, 
It looks interesting. Yeah, it does. Ooh. Like a drill? I like that. <laughs> That's pretty great. <laughs> that was cool. That's an unupgraded Spear of Honor, too. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. We still... Yeah. So the, the capacity leveling I did was to make sure I can hold some of these heavier weapons and still do a regular roll here. Right. Man, that's, that's such a cool weapon. Mm-hmm. The retractable chain is like... I don't know. I'm a I'm a sucker for weapons that do weird things. Brick weapons. Yeah. In Bloodborne terms. Yeah, exactly. I love Bloodborne's weapons. Like they're all really cool. Mm -hmm. Comment your favorite Bloodborne weapon or Liza P weapon, honestly, if we're playing right. that. But yeah. I like the idea of a trick weapon. It was, I think, maybe my favorite Bloodborne like trick weapon. Uh, it's tough, but the Rakuyo uh, or the Holy Moonlight. Yeah, I mean the Moonlight's always a good fall, like standard. Yeah. Moonlight being in all the different ones is so good. I liked. Um, maybe you probably mentioned it, but it's the um, it's the only blade. That like when it transforms is still a blade or whatever. Like it's not. Um, hold on, what is it called? Ludwig's holy it's, blade. It, it might be, yeah. Where it's like a thin straight sword, but then you like combine it with the sheath and it becomes a great sword. Yep, that's Ludwig's holy blade. <laughs> I like that one a lot. It's good. It's, it's a really really good, good for staggering enemies. Yeah, it's it's a solid like if you're not sure what weapon to pick and you're trying to play Bloodborne, use Ludwig's Holy Blade. Unless you're yeah. trying to do like a Blood Tinge or Arcane type thing, but if you're just starting, don't do that. Just get a good solid melee weapon and Ludwig's Holy Blade is a good choice there. I think I ended up with the Katana style weapon. The Chikage. And yeah, Chikage. That was a good weapon. It is, yeah. It's a solid weapon. That one, of course, uh, you can't go wrong with the pizza cutter either. What? Can't go wrong with the pizza cutter. Oh, the pizza cutter? Yeah, I love the pizza yeah. cutter, yeah. I like the boom hammer. <laughs> the boom hammer's pretty awesome, big, yeah. Big explodey hammer, yeah. Oh, that one's fun. Pretty it's a King DDD hammer. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, there's like a bar down here. Like a wet bar or something. What the? As opposed to a dry bar? Yeah, exactly. Greatest show on the Earth. Greatest show on Earth. The biggest show on earth is coming to Krat and make your heart race. Dear ladies and gentlemen, in introducing the grand exhibition in Krat, the city of tomorrow, the center of the new age. State-of-the-art machines, balloons spread across the sky, and a popular performance that toured from across the great desert in the south to the country in the far east. Don't forget the essence of the automated puppet, the center of Krat's revival. The greatest show awaits you all. Don't miss your chance to see the following at the exhibition gallery. Puppets of the future. Multi-purpose puppets, Vanini Tram, New Butler Puppets, Special Exhibition Gallery, Treasure from the Far East. If you wish to behold these splendors, be sure to attend. Oh boy. Alright, so this place is getting a little labyrinthy. Uh, so Yeah, it's, this place is huge. Yeah, it's, I was not expecting this underground passage to be this massive, so... Well, it's an entire, like... As we can see, exhibition hall, right? Like, right. I could see this being uh, not quite like a museum, but um, ooh. akin to ooh, hey bud, you you, you all right there? Can not interact? Can I smack it? No. Okay. Yeah, it's like the day of tomorrow exhibits, right? Like that you see or whatever. Hmm. Um, and like shows where like it's not quite a museum, but it's not quite an amusement park. It's like this weird in between, where there's food and places to explore, but also the cool things to look at for future tech or whatever. Mm. It's like a convention. Okay. That's what it is. That's what it makes me think of. Right, this exhibition hall is kind of like, hey, come check out Vanini Con. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Benini would run a convention. Behold all of my things! <laughs> he would do that. I mean, this is called the Lorenzini 
arcade. Yeah. Uh, this is absolutely what he's doing. Check out my stuff. Check out my puppets. Yep. Look at all the cool things I've made. Oh, what the... This is another... This goes down? Oh, boy. All right. Try to explore the entirety of this level first. I feel like maybe those two connect. No, we're... Oh! This is... Yeah. Yeah, this is back up with the... Okay. The stompy guys up there. So I've, I've come full circle at this point. Because you go down that. There's a treasure chest, and then... Mm -hmm. Okay. So oh, okay, I see. So this is the next way down, then. Y yeah, there's... Okay. There's two ways down... Okay. Wait. We've already been here, though, right? Yeah, alright. Let's go to the other way that's down. Yeah, right. Whew. Clear as mud. Listen. Don't rely on my sense of direction. It's terrible. <laughs> okay, but, like, if it's any consolation, I'm usually okay at, like, picking up direction after a while. Right. This place is confusing as hell. Yeah, there's... It's not as confusing as uh, Bloodborne's, like, woods, but that's because it's not a labyrinth. W the woods is like, hey, you can go wherever you want. Like, uh, right. well, where am I in this place? <laughs> right. I would say it's akin to the cathedral in Code Vein. Yeah, but it's... Like, the first time you go through the cathedral and you're just like, I don't know but it's not all, what I'm doing. But it's not all white. Like the cathedral is, but <laughs> right. Well, that's part of what lends to the cathedral's confusion specifically, because you're like the only sets of color you have to go for reference are like these little lanterns in certain columns. What the heck is this? Uh, like in a cage, I guess. Yeah, they'll probably bust out here in a minute. Probably. Yeah, the. I I had a bit of a oh oh no. Oh, oh hey. Well, I guess that would happen to be the puppet jester. Oof. Oh, he got a break on his ability. How about we don't... Whoa. Yeah, that was weird. Oh, those are juggling batons. Oh. Thanks for the help there, buddy. I know, right? Come on. Ooh. Oof. Oh, they're attacking him. That's interesting. Oh, what? That was really unfortunate. No! Come on. He had like one that was HP. So close. That was so close. So many creepy voices in here. I, I know it. All right. So, would the sword be better here for you instead of the? Maybe. Yeah, I didn't have it equipped. Is the problem? I should have re-equipped it. So, yeah, let's try it. Since since you kind of have it set aside specifically for these. Whoa. That was weird. It was. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. That move is rough. Uh-huh. But you got a lot more health this time around, so you should be alright. Yeah, I agree. It is so fascinating to me that these enemies are, like, attacking the Jester first. Yeah, that one attacked me, but I hit it as well. Stop that! Stop! Stop! No! No! I know his weapons can break, too, because I saw them flash me perfect guarded. Yeah. 
There it is. Yeah, that was fun. Get out of here. Hunter's amulet. Heck yeah, man. What does that do? Let's see. Well, it's a thing. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's more ergo acquisition. That's pretty cool. Let's see. This one's fable slot, stam recovery, weight limit. Those first two are necessary. So, if anything, that one. More, more ergo. I don't know. I think I'm going to stick with... So I think I'm getting a decent boost. From, uh... That was horrifying. Yeah, once... So that that guy was attacking in a way that I'm very used to. Like, I kind of locked in at a certain point. Like, oh, this is a Sekiro fight. Because um, it's that kinetic, like, block, block, hang on a second, block, block hang on a second, block, and then pause, then block. Once you understand it, you can kind of just perfect guard all of it, which is why he started to break his weapons, but his posture broke first. So I just, okay, big attack, and then just crunch him. Um, right. But yeah, that, that enemy is, a, he's super aggressive, and I don't like his hookshot attack, because it's kind of annoying when I'm trying to get away, but it's not necessarily a bad attack or a bad enemy at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's, just my personal, uh, like, God, oh, cut it the hell out, guy. <laughs> it's, that's more of a, for me, that that particular move is more of a, along the lines of... Oh, venerable lady, looking for some wine? You don't like the wine you've got? Exactly. This is along the lines of, how could you use my own move against me? Yeah. This, is a, this is outrageous. <laughs> this is a, it's unfair. It's unfair, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, I get I get salty about it, but it's like, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I knew, I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> Surprise! Ow, blade to the face. And now you can get in the box and ship yourself off to a different place where there are not any wild puppets or monstrous people. Uh. You all right there, man? This doesn't look like there's... Can I... Can you hit him? Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, hello? Is anyone there? Uh, yeah. Oh, Vanini. Calling any and all stargazers in the vicinity. Please respond. Okay. Got that shortcut open. So that was an intercom. Cause it's been a minute since we've seen a phone, right? Yeah, I, I would go. Well, he said stargazers, so I would actually go touch the stargazer and see. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, try and make that connection. For some reason. Oh, there's a talk with Vanini option. How about that? Since we're here, we should go ahead and get the old lady her vintage drink. I do agree. Let's go do that. I do declare. It's a rainy day at Rosa Isabel Street entrance. It sure is. Oh, hey, I got enough to level up, too. I think we, like, go around and go up there, right? Yeah, it's not a direct route. I can't, yeah, I can't vault up there. All right. What do you think this is, Elden Ring? Yeah. I think this is Breath of the Wild. <laughs> what do you think this is, a game with a dedicated jump button? Yeah, that's the truth right there. 
I... So... They made big strides after, like, Dark Souls uh, with doing the jump button in a way that, like, felt better. Because in Dark Souls, you're running, you hold the B button to run, and then you release and you press it again to jump. It's just awful. Like, I, I love Dark Souls. I'm I'm pretty good at Dark Souls. Ah, I do not like that jump. Um, so they fixed it, but then Elden Ring is like, here, you have a dedicated jump button. It's like, oh, how did I live without this? Here we go. Ah, lovely wee. Even in the bottle, it has a distinctive shade of red. Oh, thank you, young one. Every step is a struggle when you have the petrification disease. But this, this glimmer of happier days is priceless. Oh, why, you almost forgot. Speaking of price, here's what I can spare. Please, take it. Commemorative coin. <laughs> yep, yep. Sucker doesn't even realize I that. kept his coin. <laughs> you were saying? <laughs> yeah. You, <laughs> yes. You can take the coin to Puccinella and have it um, appraised. Oh. Do we do that now? Mm -hmm. I would. You can block enemy attacks by guarding. Did you know that? What? What? I'll use my power to. Yes. Good time to get a level in, too. So there you go. Yeah, so I've begun to just alternate these. Can you see 3 4? Four, 4 3. <laughs> so. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, quality build is working for what I'm doing. Like, this is pretty much. That's what this is. So. At the house of Anini, even... Request appraisal. Strike a light. You found a commemorative coin dating from the founding of the Vanini Foundation. Oh, boy. The Foundation is a sort of fan club, sir. A very limited number of these were minted for the original members. Mm. Well, once Master Vanini established himself as the... <clears throat> Prince of High Society, <clears throat> his popularity skyrocketed. And his signature coat and glasses were mass-produced. This ah. is one of the originals, however, hmm. from the limited run. Take care of it, won't you? All right, then. You have restored Master Vanini's lost collection. You've earned this small token of appreciation, sir. Thank you. There you go. Half Moonstone. Very nice. Yeah, so let's let's look my way at this. So if we look at this weapon, yeah, there's half moonstone there, so we can upgrade that or that with half moonstones. Right. We're starting to get. And this would be full moonstone of the covenant. So my understanding is full moonstone of the covenant is the final upgrade material for these. So I think it's okay. for plus four you use one, and then for plus five you use two. I think. That makes sense. Yeah. Two or three. Yeah, once I get one of those, we'll be able to confirm uh, how that works. I'm going to run up to the tree real quick. We'll move on. Got to get my coins. Yeah. I got... Uh, that's the other thing. I, because I was doing a little grinding between videos here, I do have more coins. I'm sure you noticed. So. Yeah. I'm doing pretty well with uh, those. The name that was mentioned. Mm-hmm. Was that Cordo? Is that right? Cordo? By who? Yeah. By who? Pulcinella? Uh, no, no, no. So, like, in the last episode, right, there was a whisper during the transformation. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Cordo. Oh, yeah, yeah, Or yeah, something. Yeah. It started with a C. Yeah, I think it might have been, yeah. yeah. So that really uh, leans into, for me at least, more of the... He was Geppetto's son in some respect, or at least P is a facsimile, perhaps. Yeah, of his son. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm struggling personally not to import meaning from other things 
into this, uh, but yeah, right. I believe so. Uh, from other from other games, uh, right. by meaning I mean plot elements. Uh, but yeah, I think that's what's going on. I think Geppetto had a son. I guess Cordo or whatever that name was. I think I think that's right. And then P was created in in his likeness. Right. Well, I so here's here's the rub that I'm wondering specifically. Mm -hmm. Uh, that out of tune music. <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, um, yeah. The P organ is unique, specifically. Yeah. Did Geppetto find a way to infuse a soul into the P organ, thus keeping his son alive in P himself? It seems possible, and it would certainly explain why. The exhibition theme was automatic puppets and city of the future. The plan was to showcase and demonstrate the most advanced technology in Krat. But huh. you know the rest. You can't hold an exhibition in a city that's <laughs> fallen into utter chaos. And now oh, the damn whole city out of chaos. is an exhibition of a nightmare. What? I don't know what you're Black talking about. Over there. Just acting completely natural at this point. All right. Yeah. It's completely normal to spin wildly in circles. <laughs> Zoom in on your face. No apparent reason. <laughs> this is... Hmm. Is it a kazoo? Uh, it kind of does sound like a kazoo, yeah. Grand Exhibition Plaza. Plaza. I want to sit on the benches. Welcome to Puppet Con. Where is that oh, music man. coming from? <laughs> I don't know, but if we can turn it off, that'd be great. That'd be great. Hey, guys. I remember you guys. This weapon is so it, good. It is. It's kind of cool to see the reprisal of some of the first enemies we fought. Yeah. Like, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag, right? Because there is this element of you want to see new enemies in new areas. You don't want to see reskins or whatever. Mm -hmm. But sometimes a reused enemy is just as good, especially if done well. And I think this game does it well, like, environmentally. It makes sense to see these guys, and they might be harder to fight, like, they might be stronger just because of where you're located, but, like, to see, like, the the butler made puppets and the soldier puppets, and they're all doing these different things in a grand exposition that's all about these different types of puppets. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have never been against uh, the reuse of assets uh, in a game. Per se. Now, that you gotta qualify that, right? So right. if you go to an area and it's like, what why are these here? Like they just start putting bosses from previous areas everywhere. Uh, and I, I am gonna use Dark Souls 1 as an example to the surprise of nobody, including Austin. Um, so in Dark Souls 1, you begin to encounter demons that you fought as bosses from previous areas, and they're literally demons. There's the Taurus demon, uh, there's the Capra demon, um, and you fight them as bosses, and they're like early to like mid-early game bosses. And then you go to this place, um, and you're like, oh, there's a bunch of them here. Why are all these bosses here, you know? Like, I, I fought these already, and now it's just they're throwing them everywhere, they're copy-pasting them. Oh, lazy game. No. The area you went to is called the Demon Ruins. So it's literally where they came from. It makes perfect sense that they're there. There's nothing wrong with the reuse of those assets, in my opinion. Um, it even kind of, like, it raises questions that are fun and satisfying. That was scary. Fun and satisfying to answer. Because uh, the whole thing with demons in Dark Souls, there's a whole whole deep lore like hole you can fall into and like oh okay there's so much to what why these things are here what's going on how were these created all of that um which 
you know, as opposed to a game where there's like some palette swaps of like enemies and they're just there to be there, you know? Um, that's not quite as interesting in my opinion. Right. Well, and the other nice thing about your example specifically is that by the time you get to the point where you can fight them, when there's a lot of them, you're so much stronger. Yeah. And there's a there's a palpable difference between your fight with the Minotaur, the boss, mm -hmm. and the Minotaur demons in the Demon Ruins. Absolutely. And I, I don't think their stats are any less. I think it's just that you've become so much stronger by then that, like, you're just wrecking, depending on how your build is, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, they'll still, like, smack you into the ground. Like, everything can pretty much kill you in Dark Souls, so... Right. All I know is, last time we played that, I had a giant walking stick, and those guys posed very little problem for me. Yep, yep. They're they're pretty solid if you've got a high boy strength build. Um, they're they're a pretty simple encounter. You just out bonk them, and that's it. Yep. Speaking of big dudes that hit hard, look at this. Yeah, I know he's he's kind of wrecking your face, man. A little bit. Ooh. Ooh. I pressed the wrong button there. All right. Oh. Come on. Wow. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Get him. Oh, and you broke his weapon, too. Yeah. There it the is. The parry on the Aegis is pretty good. That was how I did that. I parried him. Wow, he still had health left. Oh, uh. knocked him in <laughs> half. That, nice. That was pretty great. <laughs> I really, really like how you can turn around some of these like really rough encounters. Yeah. Yeah. Shot cartridge. That's heavier, and everything is an upgrade there. Boom. Yeah. So we're back in slightly heavy territory. So I'm gonna put secondary back to this. Yeah. Because we're mostly hitting things with the scythe, and the dancer sword is good too, so. Yeah, that was a good encounter. That was a fun fight. <laughs> ah. Unlike some fights I could mention. <laughs> yeah. I thought the clown was your favorite fight so far. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, uh,. The pinnacle of uh, non-annoying <laughs> mechanics. <laughs> uh, Man, this. this kazoo is like, it's killing me right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's simultaneously hilarious and infuriating. <laughs> Stop the kazoo! Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely like grating a little bit. I think that's the point, but it's a little grating. Uh, right. All right. I think this is the train you were talking about. If you were talking about, I might be making that up, but this looks like the right way. To I go. I don't remember talking about a train, but yes, you do need to get on the cable car. It'll take you in t into the grand ex exhibition, specifically. The grand exhibition. So I had to uh, fly recently, and uh, it was I, I was at the Dallas. Fort Worth Airport in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, Dallas, Texas, and uh, I had to ride something. I think it was called Skylink. Um, so I'm not used. Oh, that's their that's the airport's like tram system, right? Right. It's the tram system, but it's like raised up. And I, one thing about me mm -hmm. that the viewers may not know is that I am terrified of heights. Um, so it's like five in the morning or some crap and I'm like having to ride this and I'm just like white knuckling this I'm like this is all right it's okay it's I'm not gonna like fall off and die in some horrible fiery explode it's okay you know right but it was it was a little tense uh <laughs> so, yeah that's what that reminded I, me of just I'm like oh this is like a raised tram I remember that yeah I could I could see that actually I've been to the Dallas airport a couple times for various flights. Yeah. Um, it's a really nice airport. Yeah, it's not bad. It's an okay airport. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've had I've had to get on the tram. Atlanta's tram... Marta. 
or not Marta. Uh, yeah. that's Marta's Marta's fast transit in Atlanta, but yeah. They're, they're, right. it's just another tra- it's I forgot what they call it. But but their but their internal airport tram yeah. is it might as well be a subway. It's like it's so dark. Yeah. When you're riding <laughs> between the different terminals. Yeah, it's <laughs> so, really dark. Yeah. yeah. So I actually like Dallas is better because of that. Mm-hmm. Because you can kind of see outside. Well, of course, if I was I was during the day, five in the morning, you can't see squat. But like, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but during the day, it's actually really pleasant because like it'll pass through some of the exterior parts of the airport. I, I was able, and you can kind of see yeah. some of the skyline and stuff. It's really pretty. right. I was able to see a little bit. Um, it wasn't okay. Yeah, this is the front that I was just at. Okay, cool. We got that open. Sweet. Oh, I didn't. Hello. What? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Greetings. All right. Greetings, young traveler. Okay. Well, now we begin to explore the grand exhibition here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, I, I agree. Like, I, I was able to look a little bit. Like, it wasn't pitch black or anything. It was. I was not feeling great uh, at the time, but yeah, I was able to poke around and stuff, and yeah. And um, I actually had to fly through that airport twice uh, during that trip. So um, the first time I had like two hours between my connecting flights and during the day. So I wasn't like, I hate everything and I'm half asleep, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, so, yeah, that was that was cool. They got some good places. They did not have a Mediterranean restaurant, which I'm a big fan of Mediterranean cuisine. But uh, they had some other good stuff there. Yeah, I don't. I can't really speak for Texas in general. I haven't been there oh. much. What? Hello. Who are you? But I feel like if you want good Mediterranean, you gotta go to like Louisiana. <laughs> um. Of course, well, they're, they're, they're more Cajun. Yeah, still, that'd be yeah, that's more Cajun. There's some pretty good Mediterranean places where I am actually. Uh, yeah. But yeah, there, it depends. I think bigger, sit, like if I were to go into downtown, like Austin, Texas, or something, you know, like there yeah. would probably be some good places there. So yeah, I'm I'm sure Dallas has good Mediterranean, just not at the airport. Yeah, yeah. Which unlike uh, Hartsfield in Atlanta, they've got Mediterranean cuisine and SFO as well in uh in, in California, they've got a lot of options. I actually found an Amy's. Which I don't know if you're, you're familiar. They they do like these um, heat up food things you can get that are huh. relatively healthy. Uh, but I actually found a restaurant. I really want to tell some enemies you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't be so far away I can't hit you. <laughs> and charging into me fifteen <laughs> times in a row. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> It's not fair. Hey, we've been, it's not fair. It's, this is outrageous. It's outrageous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. Hey, a ladder. I don't know if, if that reference will ever get old. <laughs> I, <laughs> like. I, I gotta say, like, it, it, some people that are watching this might not like this point, but the prequels are freaking classics, man. And I will acknowledge that there are script writing and direction issues. <laughs> like... Oh yeah, there are. <laughs> so it's, but the memes uh, are just fantastic uh, for the prequels. Yes. They're so good. Yeah, there are great memes for the prequels for sure. Yeah. Um, I will say that age has helped it considerably, yeah, right? Yeah. Because when it first came out, it, it was a train wreck. <laughs> They were with the way of their people time. were responding. Yeah, it was not well received. None of them were right. Like, and I don't think they were ahead of their time. I think I love the prequels for the for the lightsaber battles alone. Yeah, they're some of the coolest lightsaber fights of the bunch. I agree, they're my favorite. In Star my humble Wars opinion, and lightsaber there's lightsaber fights. The the original, I think, had better emotional and thematic resonance to them. There there was still right. stuff going on in the prequels, but I feel like the originals were more classic. With here's what the fight actually means, kind of thing. Right. Well, especially the climactic fight between Luke and Vader, right? Like that's been building up for three whole movies. Yeah. And Luke has met his defeat soundly in the second movie. Right. And there's just a whole lot of like 
things happening. So there's a lot of energy and, and emotions put into it, and then how they're all tied together relationally as well is just interesting. Mm -hmm. cool. um, and there is something to be said with with the lightsaber fights in the original, because like it's a different. It's almost a different form of combat oh, yeah. versus like what we experienced in the in the uh, prequel trilogy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's still choreographed well, and by well I mean you can tell that Luke is barely keeping up in Empire. Right. And I think there's a lot to be said. Like you don't need to have to, to have a well choreographed fight. You don't need to have them freaking going absolutely insane like in the prequels um it, that's good i like that but it's not necessary um right and i think you can have kind of a untrained like you could obviously mark hamill was was trained on how to fight with sword um but you don't have to have that sort of form to have it choreographed well what i don't like right. is baseball swings because you're just gonna get your spine cut, <laughs> like while your back's turned. By even someone with even a little bit of training is just gonna cut you down. Um, right. So it raises questions of what is the intention if someone's getting away with like 15 baseball swings in a you know in a row? Like, are they that incompetent? Are they messing with them like Vader was in the Empire? Because right. Vader could have killed Luke a lot of times in that encounter. Yes. And he did. That's true. <laughs> um, yeah, but you understand why they they explain it and like the, it makes all the sense in the world why he's not killing him. Right. It's he's trying to he's trying to capture him. Capture, recruit. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Give in to the dark side. Yeah. Right. It's very clear what's going on there, and that's that's what makes it great. Yeah. And honestly, of all the sets of trilogies, the Starfighters in the original trilogy are my favorite. Oh yeah, yeah, like the Incom uh, uh, X Wing well, like stuff. The, yeah, 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 yeah X Wing, A Wing. You know, the B Wing is a fascinating story, like how its invention comes about and everything. It's asymmetrical design um, is very interesting. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was. I'm gonna show my nerd here a little bit, and I don't remember all the details. We've been doing so that, I'm sure. sir. <laughs> <laughs> right, but like we're we're talking like deeper lore kind of nerdage here. Oh yeah, go crazy. Um, but the the, the B wing specifically was a group effort between the Mon Calamari and I think Bothans. I don't quote me on that, but like there's another group that is part of the Rebel Alliance, right? And um. It was meant to be a replacement for the X-Wing. That's that, that's what its intention was. It was specifically designed to take on, like, the Star Destroyers. Mm. That, that was its whole purpose. That's why it has ion cannons and the proton torpedoes, the three cannons on the wings when it splits and it has the S-foils, you know? Does it have bombs? I thought B-Wings had bombs, too. They they can be equipped with bombs like, as well. Like Y-Wings, yeah, like, like it's an all-purpose type thing? Yeah, they were they were designed to be frigate destroyers. Um, That's awesome. I didn't know. It, but I also, didn't know any of that. That's cool. Yeah, but also, but also to be you know comparable in combat as well, right? You don't want to be caught un, unawares by like a Tie Fighter that can fly circles around everything. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I like, can see a Tie Interceptor taking one of those apart. Right. And that's why A wings started to become really popular in the in the alliance, right? Because they were speed comparable to the Tie Fighters. Right. They gave up a lot of shielding because of that, so they were a lot more fragile, and you had to be a lot better on your toes. But I love A wings. They're cool. They're awesome ships. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah. So and the um. I think because of the designers specifically, they they introduced the gyroscoping um, cockpit as well because they didn't like the idea of like spinning wildly with the ship. They always wanted to have the same orientation. Oh sure. Um, yeah. Which I again, I just find fascinating that they built a ship that does that. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me wonder. Like, I'm not a big sequel trilogy fan, but the redesign of the X-Wings in that one was kind of interesting. Good grief. 
I don't know if it was um, any different like functionality, but it looks interesting at the very least. Yeah, they they're a little sleeker. Yeah. Um. I if there are any like actual changes, I mean, we're talking decades between the fall of the empire and episode seven. Yeah, that that's sort of the issue, right? Like, I don't understand. So, like the X wings and the the rebels. Starfighters in the original trilogy. My understanding is they were supposed to be like they were produced, right? The, like Incom, what I said before, produced the T whatever. I forgot the number. The the X wing though. Uh, right, and before that was the Z ninety five Headhunter, which was its predecessor, which was like an X wing without the X. Yeah, yeah. It was just the two wings. Yeah, it was like an X wing without S foils, and it had just the two cannons. I think. Right. What? Oh, there it is. Um. Oh, I forgot that the light turns red when those are nearby. Yeah. yeah but, uh, I don't... I don't get, like... They, they went into it a little bit in The Last Jedi, but, like, what are these companies actually doing? Um. Oh, should I go down or up here? Let's see. Oh, that looks like a shortcut. Probably go down first. It'd be worth opening, yeah. Some big dudes down here. There's a baton puppet and get a strength amulet from. Ooh. Must be that guy. Ah. Wow. Interesting. Um Hi. Yeah, well so this is this has been like it's not really a complaint per se, but this is like kind of my complaint with Star Wars specifically, is that it doesn't matter what era of Star Wars you are in, the the technology is still the same. Yeah, it's very stagnant technology, but there's also like clearly things are being developed. So, what's actually going on with that? Right, it's very strange to me specifically because like we talk about the High Republic era, and you look at how the consoles yep. work and their ships, and it's like I don't know the same thing as. <laughs> The prequels, uh, yeah. yeah. The the really really the um the biggest changes in technology that I've seen happens aesthetically during specific eras that are represented in Star Wars. So, like you've got the High Republic, and they've got an aesthetic, even though functionally it's all relatively the same. Right. And then you've got, you know, the prequel trilogy has its own aesthetic that blends into the original trilogy in some ways, but you can still see the changes that happen, right? Like, so by the end of, by the time you get to episode three, their, their starships aren't quite Star Destroyers, but, you, but they're pretty close. They, they, they are. They're Benedict Star Destroyers, I think. Right, and so, yeah. like, they're, you, I think you they can started see the natural... The but yeah, like, your, your point stands, though. Like, yeah, they're, they're progressing their designs. And, and actually that's one thing I liked about episode 3 specifically is that you can kind of see how it, how they became TIE Fighters and Interceptors and Star Destroyers and all these things yeah. based off of what they were. Mm -hmm. Now if you really get into the nitty gritty it's really strange to be like well why did you guys lose the shields? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah for the fighters. Like, yeah. Yeah like so the Jedi Starfighters and all the other ones had shields. But for whatever reason, the Imperial's TIE Fighters don't. Yeah, they probably had to do some negotiation somewhere, like some sacrifice for maneuverability or some. Possibly. They, they removed their uh, light, life support systems, too. TIE Fighters don't have life support. Yeah, that's true. So maybe just for mass production purposes. Mass production, they just like, you know, making them easier to produce and faster, more nimble. Right, and you know, people are expendable, so yeah, they don't care. Especially about their when violence. you can just, yeah. all right, especially when you can just force people into the uh, into the service, whether you want them to or not. Yep, you're an empire. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but largely, I and I like the episode one heck, I think the best of any of the prequel era uh, because it's just so unique. Like, you don't really see anything like Naboo, Starfighters, and 
Trade Federation weird donut with the donut hole still in the donut chip. <laughs> right. It's still like a what? What is? What is this ship? You know. But yeah. Yeah. Those. Cool. Um, yeah. Well, and their purposes make make all the difference in how they're designed, right? Yeah. So, like the control ship that you're referring to uh, for the Trade Federation, the the donut. Put the donut hole in yeah, it. Yeah, it's like they're. <laughs> I don't. It's, I mean, it's, it's their control center for their androids. That one or, of them is. Their, uh, they had like battle droids. They had like twenty or thirty of them blockading the planet, right? One of them was right, but ship. right, but um, that's that's the thing. Is like the. I think each one controls a certain amount of them, but the other aspect of that is that those ships were specifically designed for blockades. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the ships that the that Qui Gon and Obi Wan come in on. Are blockade runners, right? So it's just stuff like There's that. There's a message there, yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't like this I, guy. He's so annoying. I know he's he kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. I I sometimes forget how much I've learned about Star Wars over the years because I obsessed with it when I was younger. Yeah. And I don't have the same knowledge I used to. I've definitely lost a lot. But yeah, I've got a lot more Star Trek and Star Wars knowledge myself. Uh, and that was actually a comparison I was going to make, because you could see technological progression in Star Trek in a way that Star Wars seems not to do as much, or at least not the same way, is the way I'll right. put that. Because, you know, I'm not saying, just, just for viewers' sake, I'm not saying Star Wars doesn't do any of this. I've, it, it is different, though. Like, it's a very different situation. Yeah, I, I, it's weird because Star Wars and Star Trek both can be classified as a bit of a science fantasy, but I would say that Star Trek is a lot closer to hard science. Closer, loosely. Yeah, depending on than, what than, part of Star Trek you're talking about. Yeah, for sure. Right, um, but it, it's a harder science than Star Wars science is. Yep. But but they have different focuses too. Like they're they're approaching topics differently. And so they have different points to prove. Yeah, I mean, there, you have to look at the thematic significance of of the um, of the medium, right? It's why, like, it's right. really tough to compare, like, the whole Star Trek versus Star Wars. You could bring in Battlestar Galactica. You could bring in 40k. In the case of Battlestar, there's almost no advantage you can give them technologically because they use like bullets and stuff and that's a known right. quantity wherever so um you know their tech is pretty basic other than their ftl drive which is just space holding uh, which is crazy yeah it's um yeah I, I think knowing how the story is being told makes a big difference in understanding why it approaches technology specifically the way that it does. Ooh, motivity plus four. Nice. Star Wars is a space opera. I mean that's that's yeah. that's where its roots are. That's space opera and the Jedi rooted in like Bushido. Yes. <laughs> you know Yeah, that's um, Yeah. It that's that's how Saber styles originally started is it was a little bit of a merge between knights, right? Like your broadsword style and uh, Bushido, yeah. Right. That's why they were wielded the way... That I'm gonna rest at the thing over here. That's probably a good I idea. Got a shortcut opened up. Killed that big guy. Yeah. He'll be back. Maybe. Perhaps, perhaps. Did you get the quartz? I did indeed get the quartz. It was okay. over here in the chest. Yeah, we've been talking about Star Wars for like 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, this is a Star Wars discussion with your Liza B playthrough. <laughs> right. Uh, Bet you didn't see that coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, see, I'd, Liza I'd... P is like Star Wars. No, I'm not going to BS you. We just got off topic. <laughs> yeah, right. No, yeah, you get, get either one of us into particular topics that we are a little more versed in, and we could probably go on about it for a while. Yep. I mean, that's, that's sort of what happened with Xenogears, because there's so much esoteric knowledge in that game, and I've read right. a lot, and 
was reading a lot at the time, so, you know, just, right. what's going on? Well, this is a little more intentionality about that specifically, too, because oh, of what we're trying to accomplish. Not good. Yeah, that's, um, that's bad, okay? Do the souls roll. R roll away from it all. All right, good. Oh, <laughs> he almost got you on that last I, one. They were, they were trying. They were trying their damnedest to kill me. Let's see. <laughs> Kill him with gears. Die. Nice. <laughs> yeah, as, as long as it's not two of them, like, that's the problem here, because it's that one throwing. Go ahead. Haha, <laughs> you died to a rock. Oh. I hate these things. I'm not used to them throwing two, two in a row like that. Yeah. That was awful. People are talking around here. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. Oh, good. A shield dude. On this. That is horrible. Uh. <laughs> the makers hate you. Yeah. Where does that ladder go? Yeah, that's a very good question. Oh, does it go down that shortcut ladder? Yeah, I'm, I'm hunting for that shortcut ladder. I won't... Why are you asking? Qu uh, hey. Oh, hey. Who are you? D don't, don't come any closer. Bell. Bell. Oh. You're not one of them. Are you here to save me? Of course. Those grand sure. exhibition jerks are not to be messed with. Especially after they took that drug. Then there are those biological experiments. Oh, how horrid. I can't reveal everything. But suffice it to say that I can escape on my own if you clear the way a bit. Okay. Please, wipe out all those mongrels. Sounds good to me. Please, wipe out. It'll be easier to breathe once that horrid victor's been taken out. Hmm. Once you're done, I'll see you at the hotel. Oh, she knows where the hotel is. Okay. Well, she's not a stalker. I was, yeah, I was wondering if I was going to have to, like, lie to her, but I guess not. Uh, okay, so this... Yeah, it's looking like a... I'm gonna, that's all it was. I'm gonna have to deal with idiot up here in order to get mm -hmm. over to... Uh, uh. Maybe you can convince him to walk off. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. As it stands, though. Oh, that ain't gonna work. About that. Oh, that didn't work either. Okay. Okay, that just drops. Okay. I haven't used one of those. Well, none of that helped at all. So. Oh, that's. There are dudes on the side, too. Come on. Uh huh. Oh, that. Oh. He can't fall off? Guess not. Oh. Wow. Well, at least he's out here where you can get right some leverage on him. That is BS oh, these right guys there. Suck. They walk back one step and I missed them by like a centimeter. <laughs> I hit him. <laughs> Good job. Boo. Oh, there you go. Boo to this design decision. Come on now. Okay, but like, you have just enough range to get him. Yep, just enough. It's awful, but Dink. you can do it. And, uh, dink. Oh, listen, it might be cheesing, but it's working at the moment, so. Yeah, I don't care. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. Uh oh, well, all right. Oh, you survived. Huzzah. Not what I was trying to do. All right. All right, I can go back out. I will skip yeah. that. And go back out here. That's this. This isn't as bad as it looked, and I did some damage to him, so it should be okay. Yeah. Well, and the damage to yourself from falling is an instant death, right? Which was my concern. Right. Yeah. Not too bad. This is to prepare you for the next double shield that is instant death. Though. Probably, yeah. <laughs> that would not surprise me in the least. <laughs> 
this one, you fall off if you press the wrong button, and you have to run back for 28 minutes. Right. Where are you, you fool? Wait. Did I do something wrong here? What's that? This, oh, oh, you gotta go up the yeah, ladder. Yeah, that's. Oh, good grief. Okay, yeah, I gotta go back out here and go up the ladder on the right. Right. I Yeah, I was a little confused there for a second. Oh, I was not paying attention to that. Alright. <laughs> do, 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 do. You fool. Yep. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. <laughs> How could you be such a pid? Yeah. So, listen here. Look at me! It's, just, <laughs> it's not enough damage to matter. No. Mm. Mm. Oh. So ridiculous. Ridiculous! Friend? Oh. I don't like being on that. That's I get so close to falling off. Yeah, it's it's pretty rough. Man, these double shield enemies are terrible. Yeah, I I'm not sure if there's, there's some trick to dealing with these that I'm not doing or something, but not a fan. I'm assuming you'd have to parry them perfectly when they attack you with the charge or whatever. That could be. Which would probably knock the shields out, but I I don't think you're gonna pull it off with ten of those. That might work. Yeah, these are better. <laughs> Let's just kill that one. Good one. Man. I'm loving this cutting them in half thing. That seems fairly Aww. new, but yeah, oh, I like that too. All right, I love it. All right. Actually, did a dodge and didn't fall off. I love that. All right, let's grab. I am here for that. Yeah. Oh, you got a saw blade back. Nice. I did. Star fragment. That's good. Got 11 billion of those. Yeah, we've got like more than we ever need or something. I don't know. Yeah, alright, 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 cool. So going down this ladder will give you access to that other ladder. Good. I like ladders. You know what else I like? Push the button. Saw blades. I don't know. Saw blades? Yeah, yeah like saw, that's saw fair. Saw blades are good. Is that going to make a bridge? Yeah, it makes a bridge. Crush him! Crush the shield guy! Oh, that's still a shortcut back, though, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, that, that shortcuts back to that little section there, because I don't need to deal with them. That's where I came from, so... Right. Um, at least I don't think I do. Okay. Hang on a second. This... Where is the ladder that I... Cannot... I don't there know. There was, like, that ladder you have to kick down, and I, I cannot figure out where it is. I, it must be further along, is all I can think yeah, of. Yeah, I've been looking out for it. Mm. That sounds awful. He's like grinding at the door. That's. Oh yeah, you you know he's gonna burst that's, through that once you yeah, get that's, there, right? Yeah, that's some kind. Oh hey, here we go. Time to read. Resurrection. Champion Victor has returned. The man who stood at the pinnacle of life, Champion Victor, has returned. Oh boy. Do you remember the great wrestler Victor, the Hercules of Krat? The man who never backed down even when pitted against a lion and a bear? The veteran warrior who painted the circus with your cheers and applause? Victor is coming back to us. Circus ad. Mm. Victor's incurable illness that came suddenly a few years ago saddened all Krat citizens. Everyone learned that he's human after all and fate can't be avoided. But with the help of the alchemists and medical science, Champion Victor is back from the dead. The illness can't bother him anymore. The steel-like will and superhuman power that defied fate. The world's strongest man, Champion Victor, is coming back to us. 
His big return match is with none other than the automated puppet. This coming full moon, witness what's sure to be a legendary moment of the man who stood at the pinnacle besting even a machine. Only a few spots left. Hurry and buy your tickets now. All right. Strongest man in the world. I have the power. Oh. Those were all puppets you fought. What? In the display cases. Those are all puppets you fought. Oh. Yeah. Urgh. Yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> 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 we try to keep it together. So this puppet. <laughs> yeah. Down here. Oh. Oh. Yeah, alright. Alright. This is about to be a thing. Oh. Is it going to be like a really big ambush thing? I don't know. Oh, are they all going to move? Oh, no. Looks like it. If that clown starts moving up there, we're going to have some problems. Oh, I didn't even think about the upstairs movement. I was thinking about all the soldiers, plus whatever was sawing at the door. Oh, it's just one of these guys. Okay. Helps if I'm able. Well, there's a big dude against the wall over there, and I was afraid he was going to stand up. Yeah. Ooh. That's a fair concern. Ooh, yeah. Oh, nice. Get him. Get him. Oh, it's so satisfying to watch. Love that. Nice. Pretty good. Really done. Okay, well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going it to be. It looked really bad, though. <laughs> it was like, oh, no. Look at that guy. Oh, man. That I know. He mustache. Mustache. <laughs> I was just about to say the mustache. Yes. Uh Oh, that's oh, it. I knew it. Huh. All right. Got him. He's done. He's dead. That's, is dead. that's a good one right there. Alright, let's open this up. What you got? Legion Caliber. Legion Caliber. Nice. Love that. Love that journey for you. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay. Thanks, friendo. Oh, a shot put. For a shot put. <laughs> Great. Perfect. <laughs> that a burn, a healing item for a shot put. Uh huh. Oh man. This is. Hmm. Hello, sir. <laughs> this is one of the bullet points here. It says, "Grab the rest of the loot and get out through the busted gate." This is no time to try to be a hero. <laughs> Interesting. What? Oh. Huh. Okay. Wow. Well. What happened? I, I do not know what happened here. This is a crazy looking place. Yeah. What? Yeah, okay. It's the tram you entered in yeah. on. Oh, hey! Aha! I was wondering about this. Alright, you know... You got info on this one? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm you're good for it. Another fine day in the city of Cross. This guy. I wonder, my friend, just where you've been? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if your goal is to study the human condition, there's no better way than my riddle position. You know how it is. It's time for a quiz. Today's riddle might have you over the barrel. Mm -hmm. But get this one wrong and you will be in peril. So answer correctly or tango with danger. But when you quiz with the king, danger's no stranger. Now, listen closely and heed the king's speech or the answer to this one 
will stay out of reach. Hmm. Think about this. Whatever it takes. What cannot be used before it breaks? Egg. Yep. Fingertips of the cold woman at the grand exhibition. Cold. Woman. Oh. Picturing a person made of ice. <laughs> yeah. It may not be the um, what that is, but. I was not aware that he knew who he was talking to. Yeah. Neither was. Man, there's a bunch of stuff down there. Are we sure that's the tram I came in on? There's like. Looks there's like a it. thing in the tram. Oh, well, maybe it's yeah. not. Maybe it's the tram out. I think this is a different tram. Pretty sure. Okay. Well, keep yeah. going, friendo. Yeah, I'm going down there right now. Go around. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, you just got like a gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you have a firearm, don't do that. <laughs> oh, is he? That's not a puppet. Yeah, no, it looks like a... Maybe he's a... Alchemist? Or perhaps. One of the factions of humans? Yeah, perhaps. He's oh. the guy that goes, hey! <laughs> That's true. Okay, so... Okay, so. Alright. Hmm. Okay, so these statues here, right? Yeah. These statues? Yeah. What? Uh. Oh! Check. I can use a thing on that one. Okay, yeah, check the right one then. I guess that's all you can do. Oh, get her to match. You have to observe all ten fingers. Uh -huh. The Trinity key, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, ten fingers. The woman of so he's talking. The woman of cold is a statue. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Cold marble. What we got here. Oh. No. Okay, so in this larger room, there are two paths um, that you can take. Right. There's one that goes up to a room with a chest guarded by a screaming puppet. The other path has an ambush in it. And um, it's recommended that you run past the ambush initially to open up the final shortcut area and pick up like a crap supply box and then we can go back and fight the, the ambush dude. Ambush. Oh. Okay. So that goes up there. Come at me, idiots. Eh. <laughs> Come on. Ooh. Jeez. They got some, uh... That's, I'm trying... Page energy. I'm trying to avoid them cross-firing me, and it's just I completely... I completely did not avoid that. <laughs> it is the way I'll choose to put that right now. Uh, right. But, uh, yeah, they do have, like, the page with their triple... 
firing crossbows. They've got like bully crossbows. Yeah. And those perfumer bolts, oh my god, freaking explode on you. It <laughs> said so you fly back 40 feet. Yeah. Dude, tons of damage. Yeah. Alright. The liquid canisters are threatening to me, so I'm gonna kill all of them. Listen, I'm I'm here with that because in my perspective, as a Metroid player, <laughs> Metroid Prime was full of those like canister style things with Metroids in them. Yeah. Like, Kill them all. Okay, yeah, this is the chest. Cool. A lot more Whoa. health than I was anticipating. Oh, I almost Ooh, got it. Yeah. Fine. Oh. Have that. <laughs> Special resistance ampule. Huh. Oh. Yes. Uh, what? Kind of looks like this place was turned into a medical ward of sorts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Special resistance. Yeah. Yeah. I. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure where to. What to make of this place. It's proud report. No one knows when the inorganic cluster structure called Crowd sunk its roots into Krat. The first documented record is 600 years ago, when there was a group collapse in the west of Krat. Ground collapse. The people who... Huh? Ground collapse. What did group I say? Group collapse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm more tired than I thought. Yeah. The people who collected the bodies of the farmers and mules who died found unknown minerals and ruins at the bottom of the pit, but they didn't know that their value at the time. After the alchemists of the isle settled down, this devil's pit, known as the Relic of Trismegistus. Trismegistus. Tri yeah. Trismegistus. Yeah. Man, you're better at reading. <laughs> was revealed to be an ergo mine of tremendous value. Until then, Crowd has was deemed a mere stalagmite with ergo components, so it was nothing special. Unlike ergo, it doesn't have power. It's difficult to process and absorb precious ergo spores, so it was more of a hassle. However, after the spread of the petrification disease, things suddenly changed when Crowd grew ex exponentially to be a threat to the foundation of the city. Ah, even now the crowd is growing. It's early to hypothesize, but I wonder if crowd is some mineral life that consumes ergo. How else can we explain the abnormal growth? Or a ruins defensive d defense device. Oh my gosh. Or a ruins defense device that reacts to anomalies? Mm -hmm. Maybe. The ruins were veiled in secrecy for too long. We still don't know much about those cursed ruins. Crowd is still growing. We need a solution. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So is crowd what's transforming people then? Is that what that decay that's, tenderly stuff that's is? That's how I'm taking that. Ooh, a legion plug. Nice. I can craft another legion arm, so we'll have to decide on that before too long here. Mm. Uh, okay. So this, yeah, we can just go back down here because that was just, that was all that was. So now we go this way. Right. Yeah, and like, if you can, open the shortcut door or whatever. Yeah, shouldn't be a problem. Anything over here? About over here. Nope, okay. Open. Oh, need a, need a Saintus of Mercy gallery key to open that. All right. So it's going to be the other direction then. Yeah. Past the ambush. And that room screams ambush. Yeah, it does. Big open room. Okay, so they're saying to run at all. Okay. Whoa! Whoa there! Yeah, muscle puppet. Yeah, that's freaking Armstrong. After getting the <laughs> whatever, the crowd or whatever. <laughs> right. Oh. Like, rips his shirt off. Oh, hey, here we go. Yeah, there you go. Oh, no, it's... There's the uh, the ladder you were wondering about before. Yep. Let's open this up. All right. Now we can take care of Muscle Man. I'm hearing him well, slam around, but I don't know where he is. He's down the stairs that you yeah you ran uh, up. Yeah. All right. 
So... Moving up in here. Yeah, okay. This is going to be... So we need to go deal with him. I yeah. don't know how many freaking healing. Right? Mm. Any throwing items. Cat dust. Got a shot put. It's true. What's this? Oh yeah, cluster grenade. Right. Sir. Sir. Oh, smacked him in midair there. Holy cow. Damn it. Ow. He's a Bane puppet. Whoop. He does look like Armstrong though with that mustache. Yeah, he does. That's not good. Oh, oh, okay. Oh. You got lucky there. Not that time though. Yeah, but. Got good. him. Legion caliber. Well worth it. Cake walk. That was easy. That's easy. Yeah, we knocked it like. Yeah, that was. I'm proud of that shot put hit though. Mid air, just dink. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Alright, so. Recommendation. Yes, sir. Is to do a little housekeeping oh. and then maybe call it for the episode. Yeah, that's fine. Are we pretty close to the boss for this? Uh, we are getting close, yes. I feel like I've been running through this area for a while, so... Figure yeah, and in fact, after we do this housekeeping, I would say the boss might be the first thing we do next time. Okay. Is it that way? Yeah, probably. This looks like it's something. But there's an item that's taunting me, but we can always get it next time. But yeah, I mean... Yeah, because there's your star, your, like, uh, summoning yeah. specter. Okay. Assuming there's Bird bath nothing... Thing. Yeah, there's... Okay. Ooh! Crumpled Baptist Doodle. Interesting. Yeah, okay, there's nothing else down here. We'll uh, we'll open that one up here in just a second. We'll read it. But let's retreat back to the Ergo, or the Stargazer. Uh, yeah. So that, that should be a straight shot to the Stargazer. Yeah. Going from that ladder. Yeah, there's dudes down here. That's my only real concern, but the Stargazer is, like, right over there, so I can probably just... Oh, that's not good. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Good enough. I, I made I made a bad choice, but it didn't end up being <laughs> fatal there. <laughs> oh. All right. <clears throat> no. Yeah. Wavelengths connect minds and ergo hearts. Okay. Agar hearts connect minds with wavelengths, that transparent fullness where lies cannot exist. Is that the new true world or a forced prison? Maybe I won't be able to think free, laughing in my head or running away. Mm hmm. Okay. So, what, what right. housekeeping do we have to do here? Well, let's go to the Estelia Opera House stage. Oh, yeah, that's strong. We're actually going to we turn into. That's cool. Yeah, so we're going to uh, use our Trinity key that we collected first, and then we'll go to Hotel Crot and do the strong box. So we're gonna. Wow. Go back through. I don't remember where it is. Yeah, yeah. Go back to the where the chandelier is. We're gonna drop into that hole. Chandelier. Drop down here. Yeah. We. And it should be around. Oh, there, there it is, right yeah. there. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. All right. As always, let's go ahead and open this first. Are there always markings on the wall? I think so. Ooh, radiation converter and a quartz. So we lose superior radiation. Lose, That's we lose good. some acid damage reduction and acid resistance, but everything else goes up. It's clearly, yeah, it's clearly fire defensive. Okay. Yeah. 
Maybe. Those, those converters are more of like the side grades, I think. Yeah. Performance of the day. The greatest singer in Krat has arrived. It's a shame she can't sing for some reason because her tongue was cut out. Oof. Ooh. And they pass through the door. It's time to understand the true meaning of the three pillars. Sure. Yeah, I'm really curious what the Trinity doors signify. Yeah, I... There are clearly three people. The three pillars of Krat or something? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. I don't know what it means just yet. I gotta get back. I just used your watch. Yeah, use the watch. Then go to the Hotel Stargazer. Farewell, Opera House. Yeah, so here you can... Talk to Paulandina, mm -hmm. hand over the Krat study supply box, study Krat supply box, and the shop upgrades include Legion the Caliber and Quartz. Brings us serving her. Welcome. Here you go. This is a supply box officially approved by the city of Krat. I shall open it and add it to the hotel shop. Many thanks, good sir. No matter what fate brings, serving welcome. Wow, that's yeah. Okay, I'm gonna grab that. That that is cheaper than I thought it would be. Honestly, what do we got? Dark Moon, Moonstone of the Covenant. We got a few of those. That's good. We don't need any just now, but I will take the quartz. Yeah, so we're up to Crescent Moonstones. We got a few more of the Dark Moon. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. Um, yeah, let's. What 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 should we craft here? Let's see, because we might as well just craft all of these. There's the Deus Ex Machina. There's the Pandemonium. Uh, this is acidic. Deus Ex Machina is landmines. Hmm. And then we've crafted uh... the others. Yeah, honestly, the Deus Ex Machina, if you're planning to use them, mm -hmm. would be the next one to go with, because I could see you making use of landmines and then running away. Okay. All right. We've crafted that. We'll mess with that a little bit. Yeah, we do have enough. Oh, wait. Hang on. No, 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 no. We do... Yeah, we have enough calibers to countercharge. Let's see. We guard countercharge for a more powerful attack. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm inclined to grab this, actually. Let me... We can always refund these for... Yeah, okay, so we maxed the level. That's an achievement for Le Legion Arm. Nice. There's probably one for, like, getting all of them as well. Um, right. So, yeah. Any other housekeeping we need to do here? Nah, that's it. Unless you want to, like, grab a level. Uh, update your quartz and level and all that stuff. Which can be done off screen, honestly. Yeah, I don't mind doing that off screen. Okay, that's three and three there. Because you should have a couple of quartz to make use of uh, the P organ upgrades. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Yep. Um, I don't know where the hell they are. Let's see. <laughs> Over here? Yeah, we got like three quartz. Three. So. That's a whole. That's enough for a whole one of the higher ones. So. Yeah, so we're going to go through that. I will run up to the tree and refresh that, but I think probably going to poke around uh, with the build now that we're a fair ways through it and just make sure it's all where I want it because uh, we've got the ability to respec currently. Um, mm -hmm. So if we need to respec it, we will. But that, that'll be done off screen for our next episode. Nice. Gold coins. Got any more? Yeah, here. man. Yeah, eight, eight minutes or so and we'll have a, one more. I like to keep them even, but that's just me. Uh, it's actually better to Pick it before it gets all the way up to eight, so you don't lose any time on it generating. So, not that it matters a right. lot. But anyways, yeah, <laughs> I think that'll be the end of this episode. Uh, like Austin said earlier, we are going to start the next episode by fighting the boss, um, and I'll apprise you guys of any changes to the uh, quartz setup. Um, I don't think we're going to modify very much because it's going pretty well here, but if I need to modify anything, I will let you know. 
Yeah. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us today. If you like what you're watching, please check out our other series. We've got our Persona, Persona 3 Reload going on right now. We've got Mika and the Witch's Castle. We've got Salt and Sanctuary. We've got stuff that we've recorded beforehand, like Xenogears, and, uh, Wind Waker, and Little Kitty Big City. So explore to your heart's content. I'm sure you'll find something that you'll enjoy and get a kick out of. Watch us suffer in the co-op place. So check it all out and just uh, give us some feedback in the comments like subscribe show us some love we're desperate just want Maybe your love <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. no, I mean, uh, but, seriously you do know, hit the algorithm we, stuff um, yeah we, we like hearing from you leave a comment uh, if you like Souls games if you don't like Souls games you know, let us know let us know what you prefer right because our goal is to provide you a place to hang out and decompress from a busy day and we hope that we've been able to accomplish that for you today yep um feel free to call me out on all the things i was wrong about in star wars uh, yeah. <laughs> start a star wars discussion I'm, hey i'm okay with that you know <laughs> Just, yeah the discussion is austin you're wrong stop it <laughs> that's not a anyway. discussion anyway hey, right more than anything else thank you so much for letting us be a part of your day we hope you have an awesome afternoon and we'll see you all in the next video. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye now. Diddly diddly do 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 Thanks for watching.